Stuart Mintz was born and raised in Cleveland in the 1950s. For the first 35 years of his life, he had no connection to his heritage. And was not really interested in pursuing anything other than my bar mitzvah. As soon as I was done with my bar mitzvah, I was basically done with my Jewish education. But in 1988, Stuart and his friends were offered a subsidized trip to Israel, and they decided to take advantage and go. They arrived very early Friday morning, and before they knew it, Shabbos rolled around. And I find myself wide awake, very, very early in the morning, Shabbos morning, there's nothing to do. Everything is closed down. You can't get a taxi, you can't get a bus. The six of us were just like, what to do today? One of Stuart's friends gets up and he says, you know guys, why don't we go shul hopping, synagogue hopping? Let's check out some synagogues in the area. Go to shul? I don't understand, go to shul. This is not Yom Kippur or Rosh Hashanah. They all walk out of the lobby and they start walking the streets of Yerushalayim. They walk 50 minutes, they pass by dozens of shoals, and suddenly they come to this white building, a big shoal, with the windows open, and Stuart can hear people from the inside davening. And he turns to his friends and he says, why don't we walk into this shoal and check it out? That was the very first time I walked into an Orthodox shoal. So much so that we were saying, you know, we don't want to look like tourists, like conspicuous and everything, so let's go upstairs. So they get upstairs, and Stuart leans over the balcony, and what he sees left an indelible impression on him. He saw it for the very first time of his life. He sees people around the bima, wrapped in prayer shawls and talisim, white beards, old, ancient Sefer Torah open on the bima, and they're reading from it. And he thinks to himself, wow! If I can go back into time 2,000 years ago, I would see the exact same sight. A bunch of old men reading these exact words in this exact order at this exact time of the day. That's why we, as Jews, are still here today. It was that moment that became a turning point in Stuart's life. He realized how little he knew and how much more he wanted to know, grow, and connect to his heritage. Ten years after I'm already Shomer Shabbos, I'm sitting at this table with my father and mother having Shabbos. Stuart's father turns to Stuart and he says, Stuart, you know, I don't know if I ever told you the story about your grandmother while you were in the hospital when you were a baby. Stuart was born with a certain illness, a certain blood condition that threatened his life, and he was hospitalized for many weeks when he was born. His grandmother was home in Cleveland, and she hears a knock on the front door. She opens the door, and she sees this young rabbi who introduces himself as Menachem Mendel Taub, the Kal of a Rebbe. He survived the Holocaust, Auschwitz, originally from Hungary, and he came to settle in Cleveland, and he opened this shul, and they were looking to buy a Sefer Torah. So she says, how much is the Torah? She says, well, oh, well, the, well the Torah is gonna to cost $3,500. So my grandmother says, if you promise on the very first Shabbos to do a special Mishuber Achvel Chole, Yisroel Eliezer Ben Zev, that's me, I'll buy you that Torah. So my grandmother wrote a check to this young rabbi for $3,500, and obviously he said the Mishuber and here I am today. So he asked his father, he says, Dad, whatever happened to that Sefer Torah? He told me that the rabbi, with a number of his Balabatim, made joint Aliyah to Israel and took the, you know, the entire shul, lock, stock, and barrel, including the Torah, and they moved to Israel. At this point, Stuart cannot believe his ears. He's thinking to himself, wait a second. There was a Sefer Torah in Israel 10 years ago that changed my life. Is it possible that that Torah that was being read at the time that started this whole process was the Torah that my grandmother actually but in my mind and heart, I know that's a Torah because it makes no sense that this would have happened to me, but for that fact. You know, the Pasuk says, Eitz chayim hi lamachazikim ba. The Torah is a tree of life for anyone who supports it, anyone who connects to it, anyone who learns it. So many years ago, Stuart's grandmother decided to support the Torah by giving $3,500 to the Kal of Rebbe, and that saved Stuart's life twice, once physically, and one spiritually. Connect to it, learn it, support it, because ultimately you will realize that it will support you.